What does this stimulus package mean to me? Hi, everyone. I want to thank you for joining us on our very first of a series of webinars hosted by the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. I'm Rodney Fong, President and CEO of the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce and a small business owner here in San Francisco. I know these are difficult times, challenging times. We're all facing them and we're all in this together. The Chamber has decided to start a series of webinars to share resources, to share your content, and to form a business community in San Francisco online. San Francisco has always and will continue to provide leadership and innovation. The San Francisco Chamber of Commerce will champion local economies that will support everyone in our community. In the coming weeks, our friends and families may find themselves in dire straits. We need to support our local businesses. We need to support them and they need our help. So please do so. At this time, I wanna pass it over to Jay Chang, our Director of Public Policy at the Chamber of Commerce. Jay, take it away. Great, thank you so much, Rodney, for that introduction. Uh, welcome everybody to the first San Francisco Chamber of Commerce webinar. We're very, very excited to have you. My name is Jay Chang. I'm the Public Policy Director for the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. In this webinar series, uh, we are gonna talk about the federal stimulus package for the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. And so this is a very complicated stimulus package. It's actually a three-part stimulus package. And every day it seems to grow more and more complex. And so we're gonna take this webinar series as an opportunity to explain to small business owners and San Francisco business leaders about what they can expect out of the stimulus package and what benefits they can get out of the stimulus package. And so joining us today is a very exciting guest and a dear friend, uh, Eddie McCaffrey. Eddie, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure, thank you, Jay. Appreciate the um, remarks. And also thank you to Rodney and the rest of the chamber team for hosting these, these forums. I think they're gonna be really helpful as you know, going through hundreds and hundreds uh, pages of bills is not easy. And so I hope to do the best I can to, uh, to distill it down to a certain degree of, uh, of detail. And then of course, if folks need to ask any additional questions, they can always reach out to you or me and we can take it offline. Um, currently I work for Mayor Breed as her uh, manager of state and federal uh, policy. And so a lot of the work that we're doing right now is not just understanding what is in the uh, packages that have been moving through DC and in Congress, but also uh, preparing to uh, advocate on the city's behalf to ensure that uh, individuals, whether they're frontline workers, whether they're businesses, small and large, um, vulnerable populations, uh, all of the uh, necessary communities in San Francisco are well represented and taken care of during what is a, uh, a pretty unprecedented crisis. So I noticed that in the background, uh, it looks like that's the room 200, that's the mayor's office. Uh, have you been going to, the, to work every day? When was the last time you took a day off? Can you, can you tell us? Sure, so been working every day. The, the short answer is yes, been working every day. I think that um, we've been really just following the lead of, of our mayor. She has just been absolutely fantastic. And I think, uh, you know, her leadership not just for San Franciscans, but also Californians and, and actually nationally has been really monumental. Um, and I think, you know, whether it's we talk to other cities throughout California or other mayors nationally, uh, they really appreciate the work that we're doing here in San Francisco because uh, whether it's uh, being the first to uh, implement shelter in place, whether it's coming out with small business programs uh, or, you know, figuring out how we can partner with our private private friends, uh, our private beneficiaries to figure out to, to figure out how we can provide the necessary resources, whether it's for child care programs um, or you know kind of unemployment benefits, whatever we need to do, um, we're doing it right now to ensure that uh, the, that like I said, San Franciscans are, are prioritized and cared for during this time. That's great, that's great. So let, let's get into it. Um, uh, the, the federal stimulus package uh, for the coronavirus pandemic uh, really came in three different pieces of legislation um, from Congress. And I don't think people really aware are aware of that. People think of it as kind of the final stimulus package. 
Uh, but let's take people to the beginning. Can you talk through each of those three pieces of legislation and what they've done uh, that's come out of Congress? Yeah, sure. Happy to, Jay. So to your point, there was a lot moving in the month of March. I mean, you had individuals that were learning, you know, different parts of the country. People were uh, learning about COVID-19 uh, all at the same time. I'm sorry, let me repeat that. A lot of different parts of the country were learning about COVID-19 at different times. They were getting different, uh, you know, input and, and information, whether it's from the federal government, uh, their governors, or from their local representatives. And so, you know, when it comes to the federal stimulus packages, um, it's sometimes hard to understand which does what, um, how did they all come to be, and whether these are the only ones, whether there's going to be more. And so um, I will say this, I'm going to kind of dip into the, the three packages that were moving in DC over the last three to four weeks, but know that uh, this isn't going to be the end. We've been hearing Speaker Pelosi uh, just this week and actually this morning talk about how uh, a fourth supplemental package is absolutely necessary um, and that she's already kind of doing the legwork and the groundwork to, to prepare for that. And so, you know, the three packages that we're going to talk about are are solid they're a good start but uh, i don't think they're anywhere near what uh the country what californians and, and what san franciscans are going to need uh going forward and so with that i'll kind of jump into uh the first package which um, officially is titled hr 6074 it's uh you know supplemental one but it's preparedness and response supplemental is the official title um it was uh, passed on march 6th and the, the focus of the bill was mostly on the health crisis. Um, remember, think about a month, uh, you know, it's currently April 3rd. So 30 days or so ago, uh, people were just kind of grappling with how uh, significant this crisis was going to be. And so Congress took action immediately and really focused on the health component of it. And so that consisted of um, making sure that there was free testing, uh, making sure that they were uh, investing into uh, vaccine development, but also doing additional research through uh, the CDC and other government agencies in, in uh, Washington, D.C. And so, you know, in addition to that, there was a small um, component of it that had financial support for small businesses. Uh, but for the, the lion's share of this effort was focused on, like I said, the, the health crisis as a whole. The second package, uh, which again, oh, sorry, go ahead, Jay. Yeah, so would it be fair to call this first package really a health and research development bill? Absolutely. Um, and, and I don't think I mentioned this. There was about, I think it was 8.3 billion was the total number in the package. Okay. So we've already spent that. That, was, that first package was 8.3 billion. I think it's important to keep track of the numbers on this one. So that first package is 8.3 billion. What about the second package? It's uh, so funny that you want to keep track of the numbers, Jay, because I think that they are still trying to sort through uh, with package number two, uh, what the final number is going to be. So I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it may be out there. It just hasn't come across my desk. But um, the second package was um, titled HR 6201. And uh, the, the full title was the Families First Coronavirus Response Act. And so this one was passed on March 14th. And uh, this one was really dedicated towards strengthening the safety net for individuals and families that were impacted by uh, COVID-19. And so again, it uh, included, the, apologies, this one is what included for free testing. So uh, apologies if you want to go back, but uh, the first program, the first bill did not include free testing. It included resources to uh, have the development of testing. The second package, just to clarify, allowed for free testing amongst all, um, among all individuals looking to be tested. So uh, again, first package was uh, investment into developing the test. Uh, package number two was around uh, allowing individuals that needed to be tested to be tested without any cost uh, to their health insurance. And, and most um, people know this second package, right, because it's the sick pay uh, provisions around it. Can you talk to us about that? Sure. So um, with around the, the, the this package included, uh, I think, resources for FMLA, uh, Family Medical and Leave Act, and also Emergency Sick Leave. And so just to describe those a little bit more in detail, uh, the program, uh, the FMLA 
component of it allows private sector employees with fewer than 500 uh, workers to provide as many as 12 weeks of uh, job protected leave. Uh, so this applies to employees that are unable to work or uh, telework because they have to care for a child um, or they've tested positive for, um, for, uh, for COVID-19. Um, the second um, element of that, like you said, is the emergency sick leave, which, required, um, which requires private sector employees with fewer than 500 uh, employees to provide them with uh, uh, a sick leave uh, if they're unable to work or telework. So, um, so yes. That's great. And how much, so, okay, so the first package is 8.3 billion, and the second package, the dollar figure is, how much do we think it could be? I, I can't, but I don't want to put a number on it because in addition to the FMLA, the sick leave, there's also care for strengthening food assistance, uh, safeguarding Medicare benefits, um, and uh, it also including some unemployment insurance, like I mentioned. So um, it's, I think they're still wrangling with the numbers. And even with the third package, a lot of the guidance um, that, that the federal government is trying to determine how cities and states are going to apply for this, how employees and employers are going to apply for this, a lot of that, you know, a good portion of it has been determined, but some of it still needs to be worked out. And so, you know, us in San Francisco, you know, in talking with my counterparts in, in the rest of the state, but also nationally, we're all kind of um, circulating information regularly about what we're hearing on how to apply. But again, at the same time, a, a specific dollar figure uh, I haven't seen yet. Sorry. Totally, totally. But we, it's fair to say like in the billions of dollars, right? In the billions. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so the, the, let's get to the third one. The third one is the big one that everyone kind of knows and has dominated the news. Um, the third one, the CARES Act. Can you talk to us about the CARES Act? Sure, sure. So this one I think got the most attention because the first two, uh, for the most part, went right through uh, pretty much without much of a fight from either Democrats or Republicans, whereas uh, the CARES Act, as you referenced, um, also titled H.R. 748, this one uh, was a little bit more, uh, you know, had a little bit more conflict to it. It started with um, the Senate Republicans, and at the end of the day, uh, without getting into too much of the details, uh, Speaker Pelosi and a number of other uh, leaders in uh, D.C., including Senator Schumer, really pushed back on the initial proposal because they didn't feel like it went far enough for vulnerable communities. And so, you know, the, the bill was signed um, by the president on March 27th. Um, and it really centered on a few key elements. One was economic support for Americans, uh, helping to stabilize the economy, and also providing support for our, our healthcare systems. Um, and so, you know, I think this one got a lot of attention um, because, as I mentioned earlier, that, uh, you know, at this point in time, which was only about a week, week and a half ago or a week ago today, uh, COVID-19 became, you know, very well known in the span of a month. And so, the biggest kind of line item on this was the uh, the twelve hundred dollars to ind individuals, um, which was a direct payment, uh, and then also twenty four hundred dollars for for couples. Uh, in that direct payment was also five hundred dollars for for any for every child. So this is the big one. I think you know this one may have gotten a lot of attention because it's the one that actually gives people money, right? It gives most Americans actual. <laughs> actual dollars. It does. And, you know, I think what people are talking about is that San Franciscans in, or, you know, residents in the Bay Area, um, they're struggling with how far $12 goes versus, um, versus how $1,200 goes throughout the rest of the country. And so you're looking at other cities where the average rate uh, the average rent is around, you know, anywhere to 600 to, you know, $1,000, whereas in San Francisco, you're looking at $3,000 for a one-bedroom apartment. And so I think uh, folks are saying to themselves, I'm not sure how far I can get, how far I can stretch that $1,200 um, or $2,400 if you're a couple. And so we've already heard from Speaker Pelosi that she is um, gearing up to uh, push for a fourth package and potentially including additional direct payments to, to uh, Americans simply because we know that this, this virus is not going to be, uh, you know, it's not going to be, we're not going to solve it in, in the next 
30 days, but that we're likely going to be moving into May. And so we want to ensure that individuals continue to uh, have the resources they need to, to pay the rent, to get groceries and do the necessity. Totally. I mean, I don't think like $1,200 may not even pay for the wall behind me, very much less like my <laughs> apartment, right? Thank you. Thank God I have a multiple income household. Uh, it, beyond giving money to, uh, to individuals, this one also gave money to businesses, right? The CARES Act was uh, famous for, give, or not famous, right? But the CARES Act does a lot towards giving money to businesses. Can you tell us how much money are we exactly talking about and to which businesses are we talking about? Sure. So you're talking, uh, I'm going to break it out into three buckets. There is um, around estimated $500 billion uh, for loans to large businesses. There's around $367 billion in loans for small businesses. And then around $130 billion for hospitals, health systems, as well as healthcare nonprofits. And so um, in the previous two versions, there was also, you know, resources invested into hospitals and health systems. Um, but this was an additional $130 billion uh, to, to kind of care for those, those frontline workers. But also, you know, as we continue to see a surge uh, in cities that are preparing for needing more hospital beds, needing ventilators, uh, needing to, you know, bring more workers online. Uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the federal government centers, members of Congress saw that as a need and they kind of responded and said, you know, we're going to need to do more. And again, that's another area that Speaker Pelosi has said um, is going to be an important element of, of, of future packages as well. Totally, totally. So um, let's just dive into that last piece a little bit more. Um, but before we go there, uh, can you talk about on a local level from the mayor's office, what your communications have been like with our federal electeds and pushing this bill forward, what your advocacy points have been, and what your focus has been? Absolutely. So like we just talked about, you're talking about a true, true $2 trillion um, package. You're talking about an $8.3 billion package and, then an, and another bill uh, that we're not even sure what the number is, right? And so, uh, you know, what, what that takes is a lot of time, a lot of investment, and a lot of um, talking to our partners, uh, not just in San Francisco. Uh, when I say our partners, I'm talking about our nonprofits, our healthcare providers, those uh, frontline workers, the city, you know, family, as we call it, that are, you know, our Department of Public Health, our, our homelessness services, as well as, you know, our transit operators. Uh, we need to have those conversations with, with our own staff, but equally important is making sure that we are staying in close contact with those in DC, um, meaning our, our federal partners, our delegation that have really just been absolutely uh, absolute champions for, for the needs of San Franciscans. And uh, I know that the mayor has been uh, in close contact with which each of them, uh, you know, over the course of the month, uh, she, uh, the past month, she uh, has participated in, in conference calls with, uh, with Senator Harris, with uh, Congressman Speer, um, she's also been in, in individual contact with each of them to ensure that, you know, like I said, uh, frontline healthcare workers, uh, vulnerable, pop vulnerable populations, but also small businesses and large businesses are cared for. You know, I think in uh, San Francisco, along with other parts of the country like New York, New Jersey, um, we were one of the uh, first places where we started to really not just deal with COVID-19, but also be really, uh, um, you know, forward thinking on how we were going to uh, kind of prepare for what was to come and try to be as less reactive as possible. And because of that, I think the mayor was in good standing to communicate to her, uh, to her, her partners in DC about what was needed, uh, what the front lines were looking like and where they could be supportive. And so, you know, I am very appreciative of working with, um, with, with our, our partners in DC uh, on the first three packages, but know that our work is not done when you asked initially, uh, you know, have you had time off? Uh, no, we've not had time off because uh, the advocacy is just going to uh, continue, which is an absolute uh, privilege in my point, but also something that's absolutely necessity. So I wanted to dive in. You know, there's a lot of concern locally. Um, there's a lot of concern locally about our healthcare system, right? And how our healthcare system has really been strained to the max through this pandemic. And I know that there's a lot of fiscal relief for our hospitals in in the relief packages that you talked about. Um, and so I'm wondering, how do those relief packages help relieve the strain or bring more resources to our hospitals in San Francisco? 
Sure. So, I mean, I think first and foremost, what a lot of people are talking about, and, and I don't want to get too into the details of, of, of what is available and what's not available, but you're talking about wanting resources, and this money was in all three packages, was for um, purchasing of equipment, laboratory testing, um, and infection control mitigation, right? And so everyone has been talking about equipment, equipment, supplies, and supplies, and it's something that was absolutely a key marker in, in especially the third bill, but also the first two as well. Um, but also to your point, there were um, billions of dollars and you know a number that I, I don't think is 100% right, but just as a baseline is there was $100, $100 billion invested in hospitals, uh, health systems for the purposes of uh, prevention, uh, preparing for and responding to, right? And so that goes to everything like supplies, like I said, but also being creative and talking about how we can um, bring more uh, hospitals online and bring more beds online, which has also been critical because as uh, as previously mentioned, we are anticipating a surge. A lot of um, other cities and parts of the country are going through a surge right now of the need for care. And so what the resources in these packages provide for is um, allowing the, the hospitals and the, the healthcare workers to be as nimble as possible to get those, um, those beds set up as quickly as possible. Um, in San Francisco, an example of that is trying to figure out how to work with our private partners, but also, you know, doing the work um, that the mayor has done to figure out how we can find other locations in the city for self-isolation, whether that's with hotels, whether that's with motels, or, you know, kind of figuring out how to use uh, convention centers, which has been done, I think, in New Orleans, uh, to find a uh, large space for individuals to self-isolate. And so the, the resources that come from the federal government, uh, I know there's also resources from the state, but have really gone to figure out how we can uh, not just provide uh, the hospitals, the, the supplies and the equipment that they need, but also the cities to provide them with the resources to figure out how we can expand the operations, uh, not just dedicated to hospitals, but to, to other areas as well. That's great. You know, in San Francisco, I think we deal with maybe not a unique situation, right? Sometimes we think that it feels like a unique situation, but we absolutely deal with a sizable homeless community, right? A sizable number of homeless residents in San Francisco. I know that's been a big open question for folks. As we ask people to shelter in place, stay in your homes, what are we doing with the homeless community that doesn't have any homes to shelter in place? And I understand that some of the relief package has gone to that very specific question. Can you talk about how much of that relief package has gone to homeless services itself and how we plan to use those resources? Sure, absolutely. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that because um, as of, you know, about five hours ago, I was talking with folks, um, you know, our partners, like I said, staff from our federal delegations offices, and we're anxiously awaiting to hear how they're going to um, roll out that money um, and how we're going to be able to apply to get access to it as quickly as possible. So, you know, I think when we talk about vulnerable populations, um, we're talking about, I think there was a total of 21 billion in all three packages that support uh, vulnerable populations. Uh, this isn't just around homelessness. This is also for food nutrition programs for infants, uh, children, women, and seniors. It also supports, uh, you know, food delivery services and our food banks, which are absolutely critical during this time. Um, I think with regard to homelessness um, and, and making sure that we support our homeless community, I think there was $4 billion in just the third package alone. That was the $2 trillion package you mentioned. And uh, that $4 billion is really mostly focused on, on um, hopefully, uh, on care for prevention. We're still waiting to see exactly um, how they're going to uh, roll it out, but also what those eligible uses are. And we expect to hear back in the next week or so. Um, but uh, we we want to make sure that you know as this money becomes available, we're not we're also thinking about what we're doing with um, our own resources here in San Francisco. Uh, also, what uh, the resources that uh, our governor has provided to us that doesn't just go towards um, providing more um, cleaning products for our shelters, uh, not just providing more staff to help care for those for the. Uh, to, to do the cleaning within those shelters, but also, like you said, to think about how we can move folks into um, hotels and motels that need to be self-isolated. Um, and I think, uh, you know, earlier this week, mentioned from uh, Mayor Breed how uh, we're using Moscone Center as uh, an area that we can kind of create the self-isolation for individuals that may be testing positive 
uh, for, for COVID-19 and also kind of getting them off the streets uh, so that, uh, you know, they move out of congregate settings and, you know, like I said, can be uh, self-isolating. That's great. I think that, so I, I want to pivot a little bit to unemployment insurance, right? Unemployment, I don't know, do we call it unemployment insurance? Unemployment benefits? Benefits, yep. And unemployment benefits. Okay, so I, I think with the, either in the second or the third relief package, there really was a really interesting point, right? Where we increased unemployment benefits nationally, 600 bucks per person. And then we expanded the kinds of people who could apply for unemployment benefits, right? Like this is the first time that independent contractors or self-employed people, nonprofit employees can really get unemployment benefits uh, on a federal level. And can you talk to us about why that was the case? Why this kind of expansion and those benefits uh, for these kinds of workers? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think this is another one of the areas that we're not sure exactly what the total figure is going to be. Um, I think that calculation is still being done. But, you know, to your point, this is something that um, Speaker Pelosi and Democrats pushed really, really hard for and that we're grateful for. Because to your point, we're talking about uh, $600 per week across the board. Uh, that's, a, that's a pretty significant increase because I think the average unemployment benefit check was around $385 per week. And so that, I think, was the biggest newsmaker when we talk about unemployment benefits. Well, um, but, you know, to your point. Almost. I'm sorry, come again? So it increased by two times, $600. Yes, boom, exactly. Boom, twice. So yeah, so you're talking about, to your point, the unemployment benefits were for uh, self-employed, nonprofit employees, contractors. These are uh, the type of individuals in the workforce that don't ordinarily qualify for unemployment benefits. And so the fact that uh, the Democrats really pushed aggressively to, to expand uh, UI benefits for them uh, was, I think, gigantic and such a big win. Uh, this was a big element of why, uh, you know, like I said, there was a little bit more conflict on the third package than there was in the first two. Um, but again, these packages, I think, uh, I mean, the, the unemployment benefits, I think, was also a key component of it was that uh, Republicans were really pushing for it to be um, just for three months. Um, but Democrats and, and, and the Speaker and, and Senator Schumer really pushed for it to be for four months. And, you know, like we talked about, the, these, the, the unemployment benefits are really unheard of when you compare them to past stimulus packages. Uh, and the reason why is because, you know, you're talking about four months of unemployment benefits available to, you know, an assortment of, of, of our workforce. But we also don't know how long this, um, this pandemic is going to exist for. And so the fact that we were able to fight um, with Mayor Breed's leadership and partnership with our delegation, along with our many other California mayors, um, you know, uh, we're, it was just huge to ensure that, you know, uncertain if we're going to have uh, this, this, um, this pandemic or, you know, the, the testing needed, uh, whether we're going to be coming out of this in the next month to two months, maybe three months, four months. But the fact that they, you know, put a line in the sand and said, no, we're fighting for four months at the minimum, and if we need to go back for more, we'll go back for more, I think was a huge win. And, you know, hats off to, to Speaker Pelosi and our federal partners. Um, I want to get to a point that a lot of our folks want, want to hear about. You know, there's a lot of small business assistance, in the, especially in the third package, right? We're hearing a lot about SBA loans. We're hearing a lot about uh, economic injury disaster loans, disaster relief loans. Can you talk about what exactly is in that, in those programs that people can apply for and then... <laughs> where they can find that information locally? Sure, absolutely. So I think um, I'm gonna highlight two programs that, you know, like you said, are available, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you exactly where to get, that, get access to information for them. Um, but two programs that I think really stand out are really there to protect small businesses and, and uh, employers in San Francisco. Um, the first one is the Paycheck Protection Program. Um, it authorizes, it's a business program that authorizes up to 349 billion toward job retention. Um, the actual program, I think it just started, uh, we just started, uh, they just ex started accepting applications today. And so I think there's been a pretty big push to, to get um, the information out as quick as possible, which we've been doing. Um, but it's a loan program um, and it uh, offers uh, loans to businesses uh, with 500, em 500 employees or less. And so not only is this uh, supportive of, of uh, businesses, but it also helps nonprofits, veterans, 
um, self-employed and independent contractors. And so, you know, I think it's a really, really good program. Um, the loan caps out per application at 10 million, um, which can be used for paying payroll, uh, rent, uh, covering your utilities, uh, as well as interest due on mortgages. So, you know, it's a program that I really recommend, um, you know, small, small businesses, um, employers take a look at. They can go to uh, oewd.org, uh, so it's www.oewd.org. Um, there's a lot of information that we've been kind of collecting from uh, the feds over the last, you know, few days in particular as they've been rolling it out. We've been getting that information up on our website as quick as possible so that people have access to it. But it's a really strong program. Really uh, encourage people to take a look at it. Um, that's great. Thank you so much. I, uh, I'm wondering. Jake, no. can, yes. I, yeah. can I jump into the yeah. other program as well? Yeah. Do the I think second one. Going there. Do the second one. Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't going to go so, there. Uh, so the, the second program is the uh, Economic uh, Injury Disaster Loan Program. This is typically what uh, the federal government rolls out in times of disasters, um, but it's another really good program that I, I encourage folks to look at. Um, it provides low interest, long-term loans to businesses and nonprofits who have struggles with uh, cash flow. Um, this, um, this particular program are you know, businesses that have been impacted by COVID-19. Um, there is no cost to apply and uh, application uh, window has started as of March 30th. Um, and I, I believe that when applying and being accepted, which I think there's a very, very low threshold to be accepted, um, I think the, the, there is a $10,000 loan advance um, within this program that doesn't need to be repaid, which I think you know, is, is just really helpful. And I think it's key. Um, you know, this one isn't, the, the majority of the information isn't specifically uh, available on the city's website, so I'm going to direct folks to a different site, which is www.covid19relief.sba.gov. So that, again, is covid19relief.sba.gov. Um, that's at the Small Business Administration's website, and there is a, a ton of good information that they are also updating regularly um, because they know not just people in San Francisco, but nationally are struggling and, and need this information as quick as possible. Um. You know, I'm, think, I'm sitting here thinking, and you know, you've been in government for a long time. I have not been in government for a while by now, right? Um, but we never really hear these situations where bills are moving this fast. I mean, this is the fastest that I, like, I feel like we've ever seen Congress move. I've never seen a bill come out of Congress where people are like, we don't know how much this costs yet, but we're going to vote yes for it. Right, especially when Republicans vote yes for a bill that they don't know how much it costs yet. That seems really un unprecedented. Um, <laughs> would you say that this is like this is a, a really fast response from the federal government? Do you feel like that uh, people are really taking this as an urgency measure? Absolutely. I mean, I can't say that enough. I know that the mayor in her conversations, whether it's with the senators, um, you know, Senator Feinstein, Senator Harris, or with Speaker Pelosi, or with Congresswoman Spear, it, there is no doubt, absolutely zero doubt, that um, that they understand the urgency, the severity of this, and the need to act quickly. Um, I think Governor Newsom has done the same, um, acted quickly to figure out what he can do to help support locals, um, and then also trying to figure out how he can serve as the go-between uh, for, you know, whether it's cities and counties and the federal government. And so, you know, I think they have reacted very quickly, but I think to what I've mentioned a few times and what people are probably hearing in the news, it's not enough. And I think that Speaker Post Pelosi knows it's not enough. And so we here uh, in the mayor's office have been kind of listening to that, heard it loud and clear and getting ready for uh, the fourth package. So, you know, the interesting part, though, is, you know, after they passed the CARES Act, um, Congress kind of decided to recess for the purposes of self-isolation. And so we're hearing rumors that Congress is going to reconvene in a, in a certain format. We're not sure exactly how that's going to take, um, probably in the beginning of May. Um, so, you know, the next month, the, for the month of April, uh, I think a lot of time is going to be spent on figuring out what this fourth supplemental package is going to consist of. And, you know, for, from us here in San Francisco, uh, with, with Mayor Reed's leadership, it's going to, you know, ensure that our frontline workers, our healthcare system, vulnerable populations like we talked about, as well as small businesses, 
um, and large businesses, both of which are the backbone of, you know, our country's economy, are, are cared for and taken into account, and that's our priorities are, are, are front and center. Um, I know this because, uh, you know, we talk regularly with mayors um, throughout the state, and there are regular conference calls with mayors nationally um, that, you know, the, the, the three first packages the last one in particular had direct resources to city, city governments, to locals, which was huge. Um, but, you know, I think what we're also going to see in the next package is, is an additional resources to ensure that um, our government is able to withstand uh, the, the revenue loss that, that we're encountering. And so I think, you know, when we talk about buckets and we talk about what we can expect going forward, I think, you know, our, our, our Democratic leaders are going to continue to prioritize those items that I said, but I think also city governments are taking a pretty big hit right now. And so I, I can foresee that being a big portion of, of the fourth package and beyond. So, so and, and to think about it, right, this is, we're talking about uh, like a $2 trillion, maybe $3 trillion relief package out of all three that's come together. So would it be fair to say that billions of dollars are going to come back to the state of California from this relief package, maybe even billions of dollars to the city of San Francisco, um, to the yeah. individuals of San Francisco. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to put a number on it because we're actually um, doing the work right now to figure out exactly what kind of um, resources we can expect from, uh, from the three packages. But I think, uh, you know, what we want to make sure, and I can't say this enough, is that uh, the, the, that the, the unemployment benefits are there, that small business programs um, are there, that, that they have access to, to the resources needed to, to get them through this really, this, like I said, unprecedented time. Um, and then also our vulnerable populations, such as our homeless, those individuals that need um, food, uh, that they have access to it, that we continue to support, um, you know, our food, food banks, uh, our meal services. Uh, so yeah, I think, you know, I don't want to put a number on it, but you know, the, the resources and the programs that we've already been able to access, I think have been, that we've seen have, are going in the right direction. And I think going forward, we'll want to just double down on this, um, you know, going forward. That's great, that's great. Eddie, I, I want to thank you for your time. We know you're very, very busy. Um, do you know the next time you're going to be able to sleep? Do you have a plan for that? <laughs> soon, soon I hope, I hope. I think a lot of us right now are just focused on our eye on the prize, but yeah, absolutely. Um, hopefully sometime soon. Thanks, Jay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. This was Ed, uh, Edward McCaffrey, Eddie McCaffrey, um, the state and federal legislative lead for the mayor, uh, Mayor London Breed uh, for the great city of San Francisco. Um, thanks for being part of our first webinar. Um, as a reminder for everyone who's listening in, this is the first webinar series um, for our uh, exploration of the stimulus package. We're going to have two more videos coming up talking about what you can expect possibly in a fourth stimulus package, about more details around the SBA loans and how they can help small businesses uh, and the best ways to utilize them. Uh, we're gonna have great conversations with other federal elected leaders and DC uh, insiders uh, so that we're all more informed about this. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, please check out our website, www.sfchamber.com. Please check out the websites that Eddie mentioned, www.oewd.com. Uh, sorry, www.oewd.org. That was tough. That's a tough one. Um, and thank you so much for your time. No, thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for all the good work that you and the chamber are doing here. Appreciate it.